Hello. Good afternoon. My name's Shane. I'm a local real estate agent. I see you have a property on Waterley Way that's for sale by owner. Is that right? That's correct. Gotcha. Gotcha. Those Stephen Alexander homes do uh, do pretty well out there. How long have you guys been in it? Uh, a couple of years. Okay. Okay. Are you open to working with the buyer's agent if the offer if the offer makes sense? Three days in the market. Wow. Hello, it's Jackie. Hey, Jackie. My name's Shane. I'm a local real estate agent. I see you got a property over on Second Street in Aiden that's for sale by owner. Is that right? Hello. Hey, Matt. Yeah. Hey, Shane Noblin here. How you doing, man? Good, good. Hey, after we spoke the other week, well, I think it's two weeks ago now, did you get that uh, resume I sent over to you? I did get the resume, yep. Good deal. Good deal. How's it going with that place? You had uh, you had any bites, any takers? What up, bro? What's happening, dude? Did you see my call session? I did see your call session. <laughs> it was hilarious, man. Dude, you're, you're just like, people think you can't say, how's your day going? Yeah. How are you doing? Right. How do you like the weather? Right. It's all in delivery. It's all in how you say it. you're you are speaking to people as if you're speaking to your uncle that you hadn't seen in a couple of weeks, a couple of months, whatever, and just catching up. Coming at it with that level of comfortable just makes them go smooth. Yeah. I've just been doing it so long, but I yeah. haven't done it in a year. So right. I kind of knocked the cobwebs off today. Nice. It was really, really fun, man. So I'm looking forward to it uh, every week that I'm in town anyways. Where do I begin with you, bro? Um, you know, We've done this a couple times. Yeah. So welcome back. Um, but Shane also has a Zoom room, which you mentioned to our last guest. That's at shaneszoomroom.com. So they're in the Zoom room all day, every day, making calls, agents all over the country, making calls, getting feedback, having fun. Same stuff we're doing here. So go to Shane's zoomroom.com and get in there and have some fun with those ladies and gentlemen. And, um, Shane's going to make some calls for us right here, bro. So who you calling, man? So I'm gonna call Fizbo's. I was a big circle prospecting guy, uh, 2020, 2021, 2022. Sold a lot of property circle prospecting. Uh, did a lot of business in a new market with no sphere. My market is, um, Northeast North Carolina. Uh, so I'm not far. I'm about 45 minutes from Outer Banks and Kitty Hawk, uh, that area, but I'm just inland from there. Um, about five months ago, I switched up with the market shift. I decided I was going to focus on FISBOs and really go all in on the process and uh, the way those conversations go. I, I feel if you approach a FISBO the same way you approach a circle prospecting call, you start the conversation off um, at odds. Because every FISBO at, what? at odds. Okay. Right. Because every FISBO has one primary objection. That's I'm not using a listing agent. And if mm -hmm. you allow them to voice that first, then you are in a position where then you have to overcome that objection. And so I like to open my opening line puts me on the same side of the fence with the FISBOs. And the only thing they can say after I'm done is, yeah, that's right because I'm acknowledging the fact that their home is FISBO. I see you have a house um, for sale by owner. Is that right? Uh, after, you know, introducing myself and then, and then we start off on that, on that foot. Um, I've been going hard on FISBOs for five months. I've picked up 23 listings. I've got another one going live the end of this week, and I've got two more in the pipeline that are just doing renovations and stuff. Uh, to okay, get so ready on. you got to put 23 listings and what? <laughs> four four months, that? about four months. I've picked up 20, 23 listings. All for sale by owners? Uh, all for sale by owners. Uh, in that time, I was doing a little bit of expireds as well, new expireds as they hit the market. I like the first of every month because that's mm -hmm. expired day for me. So I really hit them hard on the first of every month. So in that time, I've picked up three expired listings as well. But I've really been pushing hard on for sale by owners because they're experiencing pain right now. Mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. you can just get in there and, and, and help them with the process, be there as, as, as the confidant to uh, help them, then, then you become their destination when they decide to throw their hands up and cry mercy. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to hear this. Jacob here, he's in Minneapolis. Uh, he's been using my script for a while. He got over a thousand in his database so far. Last call session, he got 24 emails in four hours. Jacob, man, you need to hop in the Zoom room. Shane's zoomroom.com. 
hop in there and make some calls, man, and uh, let us hear what you got. Cool, man. So how many for sale by owners do you have to call today? I'm Not gonna, a lot. I'm going to put it right Go here. Ahead. HTTP, bam, bam, bam. Shane's Zoom Room dot com. It's it's just Shane's Zoom Room dot com. It's that's it. It's as easy as how to get ask. in there. It's pretty easy. Um, but how many do you have to call? I've got eight or nine to call uh, that have hit in the last few days. You know, Cal um, Calpin is on here. It's I like do. one o'clock in the morning over there. I do. Guys, we have, in addition to people from across the United States that join that Zoom room, I've got agents from Scotland, from South Africa, from Dubai, from Belgium. You actually get to see calls happening, live cold calls happening all across the world, right? Somebody said www. Don't put in www. Just type shanezoomroom.com. In a Google search. Or just put it in the browser. In the browser, yeah. It can be Any anywhere, browser. but just don't put www. That's not going to work. All right, guys, listen. Without further ado, let's hear Shane on the call. I want to see you guys in Fort Lauderdale. I want to see you in California and Hollywood. I want to see you in Kentucky, Lexington. I want to see you in, where am I going to be? Sacramento, Denver, Orlando, Nashville, Richmond, Virginia. I want to see you guys. Make sure you're keeping up with where I'm going to be, when I'm going to be there on stage. Really just screaming at you guys, putting on a show um, and all that good stuff. But also RedXDiscount.com. If you guys do not have RedX and you're not utilizing GeoLeads, expired, going back 10 years worth of expired, utilizing the dialer, right? If you're not utilizing that, what are you doing? Because I'm just trying to talk to people all day long. Go back and watch my calls I did a couple hours ago. This is going to end up being a three-hour call, three-hour live stream, something like that. And also, when Shane gets through calling, I'm going to put the link in the comments so you guys can come on live and get my advice on your situations. All right. Let's roll, dude. I'm, All right. I, I have to hear this. All right. I guess she decided to put her hair studio phone number. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm assuming she owns the hair studio. Let's go to the next Who one. knows, dude? She could have just been working there, and she probably owns it. Yeah. I'll text her email subject line. All right. Crazy how these for sale by owners are not even picking up. Hi, uh, this is Jackie. Leave me a message after the tone. All right. So anytime on the initial call when someone doesn't answer, especially mm -hmm. if they give their name, I send yeah. them a text message, first name, and a question mark. Okay. Okay. So their first name and a question mark. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of responses. They'll okay. send back, who is this? Or they'll call me back. And then we can have the conversation. Just just drop in dimes here. Add to contacts. I also add them to my contacts and I put the street name. Yeah. 
and FISBO so that when they call me back, I know how to you go know into exactly my script. exactly who it is. Right, because yeah. that's their name that pops up on the screen. Yep, and you know they're a FISBO, you got the address, you're like, oh, hey, yeah, I was calling about your house. Is it still for sale over there or whatever? Yeah, genius. This is just golden nuggets type, type stuff here. Mm. All right, we'll go on to the next one. We'll wait for them to respond. I don't know what this means. What system are you talking about, Ariel? How does the system, how the system deals with maybe two agents are in same area? Does it produce same leads? Oh, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I know what you're saying, bro. You pick the subdivisions you want to call in. You can get any Uh property owner you want. You pick it. So unless somebody picks the same subdivision, no. If somebody picks the same subdivision, yeah. But what are no? Let me just go ahead. Like, you guys can put in the comments. Like, who actually makes calls, and are they in the same? Like, if I said everybody, everybody, comment right now who are making calls. I guarantee you, every single one of them is in a different market. How many agents are in your market making calls, like calling subdivision after subdivision after subdivision? Nobody, you know, nobody. I mean, and like the people that do make calls, they don't make calls very long. You make calls for a good six to eight months, maybe a year, two years at the most. You don't make calls anymore. You built such a big database. You're done. Pretty rare. Even if it's somebody else is like the same agent can be calling the same prospects. It doesn't matter. What time is the Zoom room open? Starts at 830 Eastern in the morning and it, it's open till 630 at night Eastern. 10 hours. 10 hours a day, five days a week, Monday through Friday. Some Saturdays. Your too. call has been forwarded to an automated voice Man. messaging system. Seven, three, Normally for sale by owners nine, is a good pickup nine, five, uh, five, rate. Seven, mm-hmm. eight, Especially newer eight, ones. This one's been on the market three, for four days. Six hundred thousand. At the tone, please rec- Two eighteen. So if they don't say their uh, their name on their on their greeting message. I send them their their house number and street name question mark, mm-hmm. and it does the same thing. They call me right back, a lot of times. All right, let's find another one. Mm-hmm. Okay, how do you get into the Zoom room? I guess you just tuned in there, Andrew. But let me go. Yeah, back there's to, no password. Yeah, let me go back to my. Well, he probably doesn't even know the. Oh, oh. Let me go back. Here we go. Right here. There it is. Shane's Zoom Room dot com. All right, let's do another one. Somebody's uh, going to answer. This dude said population of San Diego is 3.2 million. My goal is to call all 3.2 million. Yeah, right. Hmm. Yeah, right, dude. I called 100,000 and that was it. I couldn't, I mean, I was so busy. I called 100,000. I talked to 10,000. I picked up 5,000 new friends or property owners. I, I couldn't, I couldn't make any more calls. I was just too busy closing deals. Once your database gets to a certain point, you're just done making calls. You're just servicing. Hello. Robert. It's not available. This is wild. Dude. I never had like, you know, like I was calling expires. Normally I have good pickup rates, which I did. 
And then the circle prospecting, I knew that was going to be a little bit iffy because she was single dialing. So I was like, uh, but she still talked to quite a few people. And I was thinking the for sale by owners when you came on was going to be answer every single, I thought it was going to be a hundred percent pickup rates. It it's, it's usually pretty good, but occasionally you hit these spells. So the one for 600 day texted me back. Yes, it's for sale. Okay. So let's have We're a conversation. We're in the game. We've made contact. Hello. Good afternoon. My name's Shane. I'm a local real estate agent. I see you have a property on Waterley Way that's for sale by owner. Is that right? That's correct. Gotcha. Gotcha. Those Stephen Alexander homes do uh, do pretty well out there. How long have you guys been in it? Uh, a couple of years. Okay. Okay. Are you open to working with the buyer's agent if the offer if the offer makes sense? Uh, yeah. Okay. I get it. You wouldn't want to pay a commission on a uh, on a low ball or something something crazy, but if it's a good offer, it would uh, it would probably probably make some sense. Are you are you military? Is this like a thing where you got transfer orders coming up? No, I'm not. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, what can you tell me about the house that I don't see online here? I see. Um, I mean, it was only built in 2020, so I'm assuming you haven't done any major upgrades, right? Uh, we did redo the kitchen. Oh, okay. What'd you do in there? Custom kitchen, top of the line GE appliances. Gotcha. Um, I tell you what, what are you looking on on the internet? I'm looking at Zillow here. Is this the only place you have it or do you have it somewhere else as well? I'll tell you what, go on to realtor.com mm -hmm. and look at the address on there. Okay. Do you have more details on realtor.com? Yeah, there's a whole lot more photos. We had this listed um, last year. Okay. And we let, we let that contract expire. Oh, I got you. What happened during that process? Did you just not get anybody bite at it? Was it the market thing or? We, had it, we had it up at six and a quarter. So you'll see that on. Okay. Com, okay. So I got you. Yeah. We just let the contract expire and now we're selling it on our own. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, is there a period of time that you're going to like, if it doesn't sell in the next 30 or 45 days, you can look at other options to maybe get it sold or what are your, what are your plans? Uh, one step at a time, but I am currently entertaining another offer. So I'm, gotcha. expecting, I'm expecting a contract. I thought I'd have it today, but right. You know, we're wide open right now. So gotcha. Well, let me do this. I'm going to shoot you over my resume. That way you can put a face to a voice and then, um, I'll touch base back with you and see how it's looking on that contract. Uh, maybe in a week or so. Do you have somebody in mind? You know, do you have anybody looking or? Well, I'm a listing agent, so I specialize in hard to sell properties. Like I do a lot with expired properties that the other agents weren't able to sell and with for sale by owner properties that they're not able to sell and get people big wins. So I spend oh. a lot of time on that. I actually did another Stephen Alexander home last year. Uh, out there. He's a good builder and he's sought after. So um, it makes it pretty easy in that respect. And you dropped the price 50,000. So we're, we're coming into a good time and it sounds like you probably have an offer on the way. Um, did they give you any indication what that offer looked like? Um, yeah, it was, it was full price. That's good. That's good. All right. Well, what I'll do, I'll, um, I'll shoot you over that resume. What's a good email for you? Gmail. Uh... Once it goes under contract, if you end up getting like an inspection done or they get an inspection done and there's a, a, a repair request or something, if you need any advice or whatnot, lock my number in. I don't mind. I don't mind helping you through the process. All right, cool. Awesome. Do you have any questions for me? I know I kind of sprung it on you all of a sudden, 515 at night. Yeah, it's okay. Awesome. All right. Well, I'll be in touch and uh, good luck on that offer. Thanks very much. Thank you, sir. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. That is how it's done, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that is how it's done. Like the thing is, is like the connection. You could tell there at the end, like he was kind of like something in the beginning, but towards the end, it was like, 
you know, you're like, I'll help you, you know, whatever. If you need some help with whatever, he's like, oh, okay. Like you could tell, you heard it in his voice. He was like, you know, like there was a little, there was something that happened there towards the end where it was like, okay, this guy's, you know, he's willing to help me. He's not just trying to get a listing. He's not like handling objections or like trying to get in there and do something. He's just trying to get in there and help me, you know? And it's interesting because he had it on the market last year. It expired off the market at six and a quarter. Now he's got it listed at 575 and he's doing it himself. And so yeah. uh, like, I think there's stats out there on these FISBOs, um, roughly 50% of them that go under contract aren't able to make it from contract to close without falling apart. Yeah. Right. And so yeah. there's a large percentage of those. Once they fall apart, they immediately hand it off to whoever is there giving them support. And yeah. So my and goal is just total, stay in the pocket. It makes total sense too, because they're not a professional when it comes to the transaction part of it and all the moving parts of a deal. We do it every day, you know, and if you're not a professional on that side of it, you know, one look we know as agents, everybody watching knows one little slip up on a inspection date or a, you know, negotiation or whatever. Um, the deal could go south really quickly if you're not on top of every little piece of the transaction. So, um, comment here, Ricky, when you're cold calling, how many times do you call a subdivision in a year, even after you called that subdivision before? I never called the same one twice. I literally never called the same phone number twice. I always thought I would. I have like a box. It's actually right here. It's in this little closet right next to me of every number, all those hundred thousand numbers I called, uh, they're all on a notebook piece of paper. Cause I didn't have, um, like I didn't have red X or whatever. And like, I didn't have all this digital stuff. I like wrote everything down. I've got them all. Cause I was like, I'll call them one day. This is valuable information. Never did. Never got around to it. Like I say, once you've made so many calls, your database is so big. You don't make calls anymore. You just closing deals. Cool, dude. All right. All right. I'll be right. So I got, go ahead. So on all of these, I have a data sheet that I fill out. That person will get a follow-up call from me every Monday until they close on their house. Just kind of check in, see how things are going. Typically by about the third, by about the third phone call, the third follow-up call, um, they answer the phone. Hey, Shane, how you doing? How was your weekend? Super comfortable. All right, let me find another one. All right, let's see. Oh, man, I'm getting hungry. Yeah, you're pulling a long one today. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Scrolling through the comments, seeing if we've got any keyboard warriors or. Let's see. Ba, 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 ba. This guy says that was, this is crazy. Probably the smoothest for sale by owner call I've seen in a while. Yep, that's well, what we do. You. That's Didn't go did, very far, but it's okay. I mean, when, when did you find me online? I found you. Um, I found you May of 2020. I reached out to you towards the end of May. Um, I actually watched one of your cold call videos. You gave your number at some point in it. And so I called it and you answered the phone. And I was like, holy crap, that's that's ridiculous. And then I did my first cold call session, circle prospecting session, June 1st. Mm hmm. So you called me before you made your first call session? Mm -hmm. I cold called you before I made my first call session prospecting. And what did we talk about? Do you remember the conversation? I just said uh, that I found you online, that I was a former builder, that I'd moved to a new market, and that I was digging into your content online. And you didn't know me. I mean, it was a, uh, it was a pretty short call. But you were like, look, dude, just jump in it, you know, with both feet and give it uh, give it an honest shot and you'll be you'll be surprised. And I did. And I was. 
No, dude, that's cool. I did a I did a uh, a podcast in in uh, Chicago, and um, the guy was like, he owns his own brokers. They're going to do a hundred million this year. Mm-hmm. And he was like, in 2018, he said the same thing. He said, oh, he said he DM'd me, and then I called him and talked to him for like an hour when he was like really like frustrated and depressed about his business, you know. He said he went on to sell 100 properties as a single agent. Now he owns his own brokerage. They did $80 million last year. They'll do like $100, 120000000 million this year. And he was like, man, that conversation... And I had no idea going into the podcast who this guy was exactly that I'd ever talked to him. You know, this all the stories are nuts. Yeah, but you don't even realize you don't even realize don't even the effect. I'll never even hear yeah. all the stories. Mm-mm. And then, like when you think about how many billions of real estate has been sold on the back of Zero to Diamond. But not only that, the trickle of what it does for those people's families. You know, mm-hmm. when you really start thinking about it deep, deep, it's like, whoa. What have I done here? You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. So I got a response. The Robert question mark from the call a couple minutes Robert? ago. Robert? that call I did? Yeah. He sent back a text message. Oh. What? What question mark? <laughs> this will be a fun one okay uh, cool we love the militant fizzbos is that what this is is military maybe oh. he he may be it's a military there. area though obviously it's yeah a lot of military turnaround So he's obviously in front of his phone. It's 17 days on the market. Hello, Robert. Apparently, it's just not that important to sell. So that was the guy that texted you. You tried to call him. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Right. Well, he's probably thinking you'll text him and say I'm an agent. He's probably getting flooded by agents. Probably. Oh, for sure. You know. And he's just like, I'm not going to answer until he tells me he's not an agent. Or if he's really a buyer, then he'll tell mm-hmm. me or whatever. All right, here's another one. This is a good one, too. Um, Guys, um, I'd love to talk to you about your situations and give you advice after Shane is done. I'm going to share. Your call cannot be completed. Are you listening to me in your ear? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're fine. You can talk. Um, If... uh, if you guys have situations you would like to uh, for me to advise you on or consult with you, I'm fixing to put the link in the description in the in the comments so you guys can come on live and and tell me what those situations are. So if you have a situation, I'd love to talk to you about it. In- so definitely stay hang tight for just a few more minutes. I'll share that link. Maybe try to get maybe two more on the line with Shane. Please leave your message for five, four, zero, five. Yeah, I made nine dials. I That's picked awesome. up two, you know, one email from a Gulf front condo owner. And then one guy, I got his cell number. He was a little too busy to talk. His house is about 700,000. He's going to rent it. He, if he can't rent it, he'll sell it. So nine dials. I got two really strong leads. All right. I got another response to my, Name and a question mark. Let me see who that one was. Okay. 
go back to that one. All right, there it is. Three days in the market. Wow. Hello, oh, it's Jackie. Hey, Jackie. My name's Shane. I'm a local real estate agent. I see you got a property over on Second Street in Aiden that's for sale by owner. Is that right? I do, and it's already on contract pending. I got to figure out how to get that pending on Zillow. Oh, I got you. If you go yeah. into your, yeah, if you go down into your um, owner profile, that'll let you put that that okay. pending on there. That's good. Was it a good offer? Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, got that. I mean, it's it's been blowing up. You know, there's still not a lot of properties for sale in our area that I have probably had. I bet I've had 30 people call about that. <laughs> wow, good for you. Well, yeah, uh, we put it on the contract the first day. Mm -hmm. Nice. Now, well, you have it priced right for sure. Yeah, I think we do. Um, yeah. Con you know, considering the market and the age of the home mm -hmm. and some renovations inside. And, yeah, it looks like a new so. water heater. Um, well, no, it's probably about five years old, but I mean, it, you know, looking at the mm -hmm. and the water heater and the We've had vinyl, and it's the interior that needs updating. Yeah. See you film outside, but I think base, you know, it's got a new stove in there, and the washing machines. I mean, the washer's not, not the washer, the refrigerator. Those How do they do they the do they pre-approve the buyers? How do they know that they're right, not, right, right? You know, those things to me that are important. Have yeah. Definitely been all updated. No, definitely. Is this a place that you were living in or, or yeah, no? It was my grandmother's house. We owned the house beside it. My mother passed away in December. I'm sorry to hear that. And um, it was rental. It's been rental property to her place for the past 12, 15 years. Same gentleman living there. Oh, I was about to say, I bet you didn't have any problem uh, renting it. No. And um, we, he actually moved out, I don't know, we, right when we put it on the market, like that same week. Was it because you put it on the market, or that was just when he decided because he was moving he on? Knew, well, he knew that. No, we gave him time to get out. Okay. He knew, he knew we weren't going to keep it. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and he was on more of a fixed income, and we told him that, you know, the rent would go up. We would sell it, and the car rental was definitely going up. And so mm -hmm. he went ahead and moved on out because he was more of a fixed income. Gotcha, gotcha. What yeah. is the closing date on that contract? I got you. Have they done their inspections yet? I don't. I, they're in the process of that. So, okay. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to shoot you over my resume. That way you can put a face to a voice. And when that okay. inspection report happens and if they ask for repairs, I'm really good at getting homes from contract to close, which tends to be some of the hardest you know, right. to do is to like maneuver through the inspections, the appraisals, all that stuff. So right. I don't mind helping right. you with that. And uh, okay. like if something comes up, you need a good contractor. I got a bunch of them and uh, I'll just be a resource for you. Kind of somebody okay. you can bounce ideas off of if you need. That'd be great. Awesome. Now, What's a good. Where, where are you located? No, or? I'm in, um, I'm in Bertie, but I've got a, okay. I've got two down in uh, Bellhaven. I've got, Hell, right now I've got 21 listings and they're wow. all over, but I have a lot of fun with it. And uh, I tend to specialize in hard to sell properties. It sounds like right. this wouldn't fit because because right. this one went so fast. But, you know, you never know. You might run up on something that uh, oh, you aren't sure about. And I don't mind helping you through the process. Well, great. Thank you. Well, I'm the banker and I'm also an underwriter. Oh, are so, you? Um, I'm pretty good with the process. I sold another home a couple of years ago. So okay. So you're a banker with who? I work with I work with Wells Fargo for about 15 years. And okay. I'm tired, and then I've now worked for a small community bank called Dogwood State Bank. Gotcha. I'm a commercial underwriter. Yes. Oh, but... very nice. Very nice. Now, see, I was a custom home builder in Virginia for 20 years before moving wow. here. Wow. 
And so uh, I had a lot of bankers <laughs> in my pocket because we we did a lot of business. So. In Chakawindi, that I'm trying to do some updating on, and I don't really want to hire a contractor. I just want to find some subs out there. Right. Do you have any contacts? I do. I do. I can send those over to you. What's a good email for you? Um, JLG. And then um, I'll put together a list of the contractors, like my go-tos down there in Chocolinity, yeah. and um, uh -huh. shoot those over to you. What are your plans after you get that one fixed up? You think you're going to sell it or hang on to it, yeah, rent it, or what? Be a secondary home. Yeah, we okay. Bought it, I bought it from the owner, and really, it wasn't even up for sale. I went to solicit it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Mumtaz. I'm probably saying that wrong. We'll see you in a minute, okay? All right. Well, you can see how this um, sending the text after the call. Yeah. With just the street name or the, the house number and street name and question mark or their first mm -hmm. name and question mark. Mm -hmm. they, they engage. Yeah. All right. So I did the same thing with that one I just called. We're going to see if we can find another one. That's not that far. Oh. Let's try this one. All right, it's another out of state number. You've reached Tina Boykin. Please leave me your name and phone number, and I will give you a call back as soon as possible. Thank you. Be call. This is my actual. This is my actual workflow. I go through. I make the call. I lock their their name and FISBO and address in as their as their contact. I fill out my data sheet and then move on to the next one. And then as they call me back, I don't have to worry about getting confused because it's all right yeah, there. It's right there. Lucas, so I don't know that I'm gonna tell you to make more calls. Man, I tell everybody something different based on what their situation is. I don't say the same thing to everybody. I say something different to everybody. I'd like to hear one more call. Yeah, I'm gonna get one more on the line. Somebody's gonna text me back. All right. So one of them sent me a text back. I can pass your info on to my father. Please do. Thank you. Now I'm going to have to pivot on that one because father's not going to be locked in my phone. I'm going to have to figure out who that is when they call me. That's all right. Yeah, that's right. easy. Like they call you and say who they are and their that's son. It. Your yeah. son or daughter sent sent my info over to him. That's it. All right. That is it for the ones that I have that hit my market fresh. Let me do this. So I got a follow-up call I need to make. I was going to make earlier today. On my Monday call last week, he was like, yeah, I'm going to do some renovations. We're going to go ahead and get it on the market. So we'll see if we can get a, mm. a good combo here. Um. So 
I haven't actually met this guy yet in person. I've had three phone calls with him and one with his mom. He put his mom on the phone with me two weeks mm -hmm. ago. Hey, Kevin, hope you're having a great week. Give me a shout, brother. See you, bud. So he's one on the second follow-up call. He answered the phone. Hey, Shane, how was your weekend? So he's already locked my number in. I'm already, I'm already his guy. Yeah. Uh, let's see. They didn't answer the phone. Cool, man. You got anybody else you can call? Yeah, let me pull one more out. Let's see. I've tried this one before, and they didn't answer on the first call. Let me see if I can get them on the phone this time. I see some people in the. Uh... Hello. Hey, Matt. Yeah. Hey, Shane Noblin here. How you doing, man? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Hey, after we spoke the other week, well, I think it's two weeks ago now. Did you get that uh, resume I sent over to you? I did get the resume. Yep. Good deal. Good deal. How's it going with that place? You had uh, you had any bites, any takers? Yeah, I think we'll be under contract in the uh, next couple of days. Oh, that's good. That's good. Uh, are they are they represented? They got an agent and all representing them. Negative. Nope. Oh, heck. That's that's the best case scenario. That is. Gotcha. Well, do this. Lock my lock my number in. If you if you need some help, like hooking them up with inspectors, uh, you know, whatever, I can I can certainly send some some people your way. And then uh, if they end up coming back with a repair request, I can I can hook you up with some good contractors in the area as well. OK, I appreciate it. Absolutely, Matt. You have any questions, bud? No, I'm good. All right, man. You have a great week. Thank you. Too. See ya. Cool, man. Hey, thanks for coming on, bro, and uh, sure sharing did. all this wisdom and uh, making some calls for us. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, everybody visit Shane at shaneszoomroom.com. Make some calls with, with the agents in there. Um, anything else I can do for you, bro? Nah, we're good, man. Just motoring on. Cool, man. I appreciate you. All right, dude. See you, bro. See you, man. All right. Jeremy, what's up, bro? What's happening, buddy? How are you? Good, man. How you been? Life has been good. Life has been amazing. Life has been busy and full. That's it, man. That's it. I love it. Same here. Same here. I got a three-year-old and we're both we're doing a lot of traveling and uh, we're doing three events a month, you know, all over the country, uh, speaking to agents and stuff. So that's really kind of, um, what I've been doing mostly besides, uh, making videos and trying to, you know, keep all the businesses rolling. What about you? Bro, I've been so busy for me. Um, my online presence on YouTube has erupted and it is just a funnel that just keeps filling every day. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm seeing three to five leads a day. Mm -hmm. It's not like your typical online leads where these people, they're spending hours watching me. They call yeah. me up. They're like, we want to buy a house. Yeah. And uh, it's been awesome. Yeah. I mean, when people, there's a big difference between a lead that from like Instagram that watches a one minute video versus uh, a lead from YouTube that's watching, you know, 10, 20 minute videos. It's a yeah. completely different lead, you know, altogether. Oh, yeah. It, it's crazy. I mean, these people, uh, I had one the other day. Uh, they said, can you please send a signed picture to my husband? It's his birthday next <laughs> month. And I'm like, no, that's kind of weird and creepy to me. I'm not doing it, but I'm going to send him a you know bomb bomb video. 
Um, you know, video people don't realize when you start to put your face and name out in front of people, yeah, they can know, like, and trust you so much quicker. Yeah, and you know, it's it's just amazing. Um, you know, last year I had my best year ever, and uh, about seventy five percent of it came right from my YouTube channel. Yeah, I was going to ask you how much of it. So, um, what is your YouTube channel so everybody can go check well, it out? If they just put my name in YouTube, you'll find it. Um, you know, check it out, but don't don't subscribe and, and yeah, just just don't. It, it messes up the algorithms a lot when people do that kind of stuff. Really? Um, luckily, the yeah, it does. Um, you know, it just like sharing your videos out to Facebook from YouTube and to Instagram and other places. Because you got to think those search engines then are going, okay, this person came from Facebook, but they only watched two seconds and clicked away because, oh, it's something about real estate. And the realtors are the people you're connected to there. They're coming in, they're watching two, three seconds popping out. And basically what you have then is YouTube going, well, Jeremy doesn't know any information mm -hmm. on buying a house in Myrtle Beach. So because this one only had three to four second view time, eh, let's push it down farther in instead of just letting it sit and organically grow. It takes right. about 90 days to really kind of re-correct the channel and get it right. But mm -hmm. once you do that, man, it just explodes. I can put yeah. a video out today and get a thousand views on it tomorrow. What? How many subs do you have? I'm just about to pass 5,000. I'm okay. at like 49. Well, numbers right back there. Was it 49.80 um, on my shelf? I got it there, a little counter. And so what I've been told is once you hit that 5,000 mark, five to 10 goes exponentially faster than the first mm -hmm. five. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the reason I ask is because a lot of agents, you know, they think you have to have, you know, all these, you know, huge amount of subscribers and views and stuff to, uh, to do some serious business. And you really don't No, And, and you don't have to do rocket science or real fancy fancy content. I mean, most of my stuff is shot right here in this corner. Uh, set a camera up right over here and shoot it. And it's just me talking. I throw a little bit of B-roll maybe over it from time to time, make a video seven to 15 minutes in length on pros and cons of moving to Myrtle Beach, things to do in Myrtle Beach, the things I love about it living here, things I hate about living here, um, why this area is better than others, why it's not better. And people love it eat it up, follow it, watch it, consume it, and then reach out to me regularly mm -hmm. saying, hey, we're coming to town next week. We want to buy a house. And yeah. what's really cool is, you know, I have been able to now build my business with the specific buyers that I want. You know, Myrtle Beach is a huge area. It's 65 plus miles of beach along here. Mm. But I want the section in the center where it's a higher price point. And yeah. so last year I did the same amount of business as the year before, but I went from selling houses that were an average price point of 250 to 3 to an average price point of 450 to 5 and mm. increased my income exponentially overnight. Yeah. That's incredible, man. Well, thanks for coming on and uh and hanging out with me for a second, man. Yeah, man. It's been don't be such a stranger. Yeah. So I haven't We're talked meet to up you days. It's been like three and a half years or so. Something Probably. like that. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah I think I the last time I saw you was in uh, Charleston. That's right. That was probably exactly. the last time about three and a half years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I will definitely not be a stranger and I'll uh, I'll catch up with you soon. All right, buddy. See ya. Cool, bro. Thanks, man. Hello. You're muted there. You'll have to unmute. Let's see. I think I can actually do that for you. Uh, nope. You have to do it. Yeah, there we are. Thank you there so much Rick, for doing all this. You have been a great inspiration for me. Good news. I got an award, gold award, uh, last two days ago. So that's really nice. But most of my income came from pre-construction that I sold not only to my clients, but to the agents in our office. I was one of the top three pre-construction condo specialists. But now my office has taken over that job because they say we are earning too much. So then I have to now go and farm a new area. And I've chosen a luxury area for farming. I'm not sure if I'm right in just jumping into a luxury area. I've done real estate resale as well. But um, I want to learn from you how to go about farming a new luxury area from scratch. 
So your so your brokers came in and said no more pre-construction for you. Is that what you're saying? Well, no, no, they they can't stop us from doing what we want to do. But they took over. So now they're contacting all the builders, and now they're selling to the real estate agents that I was selling to because I was getting a little bit of the commission and giving most of the commission back. But that yeah. still increased my income quite a bit. But yeah. now is they they've contacted all the builders and saying that they are so I'm trying to reach to builders that they are not contacting still, but, but uh, it's it's not so easy now you know because gotcha. they do most of the popular builders and the popular yeah. places so I need to move right. on I need to earn and I need to stop um, getting upset and depressed about it and just move on to a new farming area and I've yeah. a luxury area that uh -huh. I feel it's worth my while to be confident, to be able to get out there and do it, but I don't know how. You don't know how what? To be confident? No, to, to start a new farming area now. And a luxury one at that. Yeah. I mean, um, it's the same as any other farm area, right? So so for me, I can only tell you what, what I would do. I don't know what's going to oh. work best for you, right? Sure, sure. Um, number one, I'm going to understand that luxury area inside and out, right? I'm going to look at MLS. I'm going to study all the sales. I'm going to really understand that market. I'm probably going to talk to a couple of the agents that have sold properties in there. I'm probably going to go look at whatever's listed and walk through those properties and become very familiar with those properties. I'm going to talk to everybody I see. Hopefully, I see some owners when I'm driving in there to see um, or when I'm leaving or Maybe I see, you know, some workers or lawn care guys or pool guys. I'm going to talk to them and kind of ask them what they know about the subdivision and the area and see what kind of information I can kind of start to um, collect, you know. Um, and then I'm going to start sending direct mail. I'm going to start doing YouTube videos and Instagram reels, and I'm going to start calling everybody, right? Okay. I mean, I'm going to literally blast everybody. With social media, emails, direct mail, door knocking, phone calls. I'm going to do every single little thing, right? If I really want to get in there. I mean, you know, it's not any different than anything else. So when you're calling, what are you calling about? Because I don't know anybody there. So I'm going to take tell a listing because I'm in Canada. Um, That's why you're calling. You're, call you're calling because you don't know anybody, right? You're calling oh. to get to know people. That's why you're calling is so that then you do know people. So oh, right now you don't know anybody. I use? What's that? Which of, which of your scripts should I use? Circle prospecting script. I mean, all the oh. scripts are pretty much the same. You know, it's like, hey, I'm so-and-so. How you doing? You know, the weather's nice. You know, don't want to take up too much of your time, but, you know, okay. a house sold or just listed or whatever. I'm just calling to see if there's something I can do to help you. Okay. You great. know, see if there's something I could do with my real estate services to help you buy or sell a piece of property at some point, either now or in the future, right? Is there anything I can do to help you? Okay. You know what I mean? Yes. Just got to get in there, girl. Just got to get in there. Oh, I know. This is a no response. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, good luck with it. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. I'll let you know how I get on. Yeah. Let me know. Okay. Thank you. See ya. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Jonathan. What's up, Ricky? How you doing, bro? Good, sir. Thank you. How are you? Good, man. It's been a while. I was on your, your first show. I don't know if you remember. I remember that, man. I knew <laughs> I knew I recognized you and stuff. How you been? I've been all right, man. Just hanging in there, you know, trying to make it happen. So you were on the cold calling show or just a coaching show? Um, it was real, real coaching, real. Okay, time. I was gonna say, yeah, I, th I thought it was a coaching show, yeah. So yeah. how you been since then? Like, what's going? Tell us about your business, man. Update us. Uh, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a roller coaster. Um, those two years, that year, and then the next year was pretty good. Then COVID hit, and then you know, kind of put a pause to a lot of things. And I sold like a few properties during COVID, and then I moved. And that was a big adjustment, you know, moving with, I had, a, I had just had a baby right before COVID. So that was my third child. <laughs> so, so I got three boys running around. We got school in, we got school at home now. <laughs> okay. Stuff like that. 
So and then my wife worked the nine to five, so I was home. I was the home dad, you know, trying to make this big adjustment with kids getting anxious. Like it's really like you know the way that it affects them, you know. Maybe yeah. It's about things, you know. Now all of a sudden they can't go to school, they can't go here, can't do this, you know. And then everything is just kind of like in the house. That's it, you know. On yeah. I, you know, and so it was very. It's very distant, you know, it's distant everybody from, from people. So it wasn't like we were able to really connect with people. Um, yeah. But um, not, nonetheless, you know, it took a dive. You know, I, I, me personally, I stopped making the calls, you know, um, because I, I, I was scared to get too busy to take care of my family. And I realized now that was like a mistake now because I had got an SBA loan. That was about eight thousand dollars. Use that to do repairs to the new house that we bought. And now I'm like looking at this SBA loan. I'm like, oh snap, it's about to hit the fan because I gotta pay this loan back now. And um, and I don't have anything in the pipeline with it. I just closed one deal recently. Um, but since I've been making my calls the last three four months, I got two new listings. But the okay. guy, he doesn't want to put it officially on a on a on the MLS which is what I wanted to ask you about because this guy, his pricing is like all over the place. First, he's like, I want 350 He's got a vacant lot, and then he's got a home in Camden. He's got a vacant lot in Jersey City. He wants 350 for a, a, um, a mixed-use property in Camden. He wants 300 for it. And then every time I talk to him, he brings the price down. <laughs> so, yeah, that's <laughs> normally how it goes. Right, and then he's like, but he doesn't want to sell anything. And then... Just recently, because I've been working for about a month, so the last time I spoke to him was two days ago. He just recently said I could put a sign in front of his in front of his properties. And before he was like, I don't want to sign up, and I don't want to sign nothing. I don't yeah. want to put a sign, just try to sell it. And I spoke to Shane about it. He was like, Yeah, you know, tell him, you know, our power is in the MLS and stuff. And I tried to do that, and he was just like, No, 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 I'm not signing anything. Yeah. And I was just like, All right, man. Um, I'll do what I could do. <laughs> do the best I could do. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, man. On, on those kind of deals like that, you do do what you can do. You kind of keep it in mind if you run across if you run across a buyer, which would be like, you know, maybe, maybe not. You know, like, right. um, then you show it. You try to sell it, but in the meantime, you just stay in contact with them. You know, mm -hmm. and and until he decides. See, right now he doesn't have to sell. If he needed to sell, it would be on MLS. Mm. Right. He doesn't really have to sell. doesn't really need to sell. doesn't care if it sells or not. Right. He's still in that mode yeah. until he gets to the point where he just really has got to sell it. He's either going to go out and sell it himself or he's going to put it on MLS with an agent. You know what I mean? Right. He just hadn't got to that point yet. So your job is to stay in touch with him until he gets to that point. In the meantime, you know, keep your ears open for possible buyers. You know, is it in a subdivision? Um, no, nah, this is like a corner, it's like a corner store because it's a mixed use property. Oh, it's a corner store, yeah. So it is like a storefront. Oh, well, that's a totally different ball game. I mean, a lot of those commercial deals like that, they don't want everybody to know it's for sale or they don't want their employees to know, they don't want the general public to think, oh, they're going out of business or something like that. <laughs> so, a lot of those you're going to have to do off market. So, when you get into commercial and stuff like that, what you got to do is, is you need to reach out to other convenience store owners, people that already own that same type of property okay. and say, Hey, I've got a, if, are you looking for another one? Because I've got one off market that you might want to take a look at, you know? Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of what you do there. If you really want to try to go after that one. Okay. Yeah. The tough part is it's an hour away from my house. So I, I have to like, yeah, well, I mean, you know, like you're not really going to spend a lot of time driving there. You're going to just maybe make a phone calls to other people who own like, you know, properties like that. Um, not necessarily around it. It could be properties in other, you know, other areas, other counties, whatever. Um, you may have properties like that that are close to you, you know, that you're calling if you want to like work on that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, you can always just keep on dialing, you know, residential and, you know, just stay in touch with that guy until he decides to put it on the market. But mm -hmm. so, so you're doing real estate full time? Right now, I have to work, do Uber. Like, I'm on my way to go drive now. So I'm doing yeah. Uber. 
Um, so my big my biggest advice, man, is to like keep doing what you're doing, you know, and continue to shake the bushes as much as you can, but never quit real estate. Right. You know, like even if it takes you a couple of years to get back in the game and get really hustling, which it probably won't by the sounds of it. But even right. if it does, that's okay. Yeah. You know, like don't get discouraged to the point that you quit the business. You know, if you really want this, you know, if you love real estate, if you really want to do real estate, Dude. so not everybody wants to do real estate. Not everybody loves to do real estate, you know? So, you know, but if you do, don't quit, you know, don't care how long it takes. Just keep going. Right. Yeah. I love, I love real estate too, you know, and this last, this last year has been the toughest year too, because I've lost deal at the deal like was was like the market started like skyrocket and I had friends I was like yeah you know you're gonna I'm gonna have you sell the house and then I called it they're like nah <laughs> I was like oh what happened I thought I thought I was gonna help you sell the house and they were like nah we're gonna try to do it oh uh -uh. I said man like you're killing me you know I got I worked with a whole bunch of buyers it was like hard for them to find anything because sometimes they still stuck on the fact that like it was two years ago, you know, the pricing and things like that. And they, you know, they still kind of expect it to be like that with 20, <laughs> with 20 other people putting in offers. And it's like hard to explain, like, look, you, I don't know what to tell you. You're going to have to pull a rabbit out the hat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so it was, it was really like, that was the toughest experience that I've had. I yeah. Mean, just trying to get buyers, offers accepted, and then them not quitting, them not trying to go with the listing agent because it feels like they got a better opportunity there. Um, and then a few friends of mine, you know, I was supposed to work with, they decided not to work with me. So all that was like really like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like it hit me hard. Yeah. You know? This business, man, it'll chew you up and spit you out, bro. You know, yeah. I mean, it'll really strip you down to the core and have you really second guessing, you know, your whole life. You know, <laughs> you'd be. You'd be really trying to figure out, okay, you know, but at the end of the day, on the flip side, you know, it, it's also one of the most rewarding uh, things too, after you put all that work in and you finally do get to the point and you realize the people that didn't use you, your friends and stuff, it's okay, you right. know, and treating those people the right way and proving to them over time that you are the real deal and you're not going anywhere. You know, they didn't use you because they either found a better deal with another agent Mm -hmm. Or, or they just didn't really have confidence in in you, uh, in your career. You know that you're really, you know. I mean, this is a big deal for people. If they don't, if they have any kind of lack of confidence, and they're going to go use somebody that they feel 100 percent confident in, because this is a really big transaction, you know, for people. So yeah. it's totally, it's. I mean, honestly, it's totally understandable, you know. Yeah. But but what I'm getting at is that you keep those in your weekly email. You keep stay in touch with those people. You congratulate them. And guess what? After five years and they see you selling properties every month and, and you're real successful, you know, they're going to use you next time they do a deal. They're going to be like, man, Jonathan, really, he, he really made it. He's really the real deal. I'm going to, you know what I mean? Right, right. Um, those people will come back, you know? Yeah. So I wouldn't sweat it, man. Well, keep, keep fighting the good fight, man. It was good to see you again. Yes, sir. I'll definitely keep in touch with seeing you too. Yeah, man. Let me keep you in, and and where are you at again exactly? I'm in New Jersey. I'm in uh, New Jersey. Somerset yeah, Somerset County, New Jersey. All right. Cool. Cool. Okay. Well, good, man. We'll we'll keep it up. Don't give up. And let me know what I can do to help. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. See, you, bro. I right, see. You. Oh my gosh, guys! Woo! Three hours. It's officially six o'clock Eastern right now. I've been on here since three. Three Eastern? Yeah, three. No, 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 no. Yeah, three. Three, four, yeah, six. Three o'clock Eastern. It's six o'clock Eastern. That's three hours live stream, guys. Get on your grind. Anyway, um, I had an incredible call session. So you can go back and watch that. I went for an hour. Sharin, I hope I'm saying it right. She went for an hour. And then Shane called for sell by owners for an hour. So plan on doing something similar to this for sure. Me making calls every week that I'm home. And um, 
having agents on making calls. I just want to continue this cold calling sessions and continue to show you guys how it's done, how easy this is. Re this really is. You don't have to go out here and do all this crazy stuff, buying leads, all this and that. It is, um, it is important though that, and Jeremy's a good example that came on about YouTube. And I always talk about make your calls in the morning, make your videos in the afternoon, do both. That's what's going to create a very dangerous agent within you. And you're going to be a force to be reckoned with. So with that, I'll let you guys get back to the rest of whatever's left of your day. Thank you so much for tuning in. Had a blast. Looking forward to next week. Let me know if there's anything I can do for you. I'll be on the, uh, I'll be doing live uh, social media training Thursday. Link is in the description here to register. It'll be a webinar. So you won't be able to, it's not going to be live on YouTube. Um, about how I create so much quality, you know, quantity content at scale and use it to build my businesses, redxdiscount.com, <laughs> go get it and go start making calls. And of course, zero to diamond.com is all my free courses and everything. I'm still answering all my Instagram DMS. So you guys hit me up there. If you need anything whatsoever, make sure you're subscribed, like the video, all that good stuff. See you guys on the next video. Take care. Thank you so much for watching this podcast. I hope you got tons of value out of it. I'm going to put the next episode right here so you can continue watching and continue crushing. Keep selling and keep building. And we'll see you guys on the next video, which is right here.